Greetings, worshipers. I feel like saying happy spring because it's beginning to feel like spring. I'm beginning to feel more positive about many things. The virus is getting under control. We have people looking forward to Easter and the newness that that brings into our lives. And we have today the focus on God's love. That's the key word, love. We'll talk about the various aspects of the love of God. Pastor Kurt Lemkul, I'm speaking on behalf of Christ Lutheran Church in Rochester, Minnesota. With that, we're ready to begin, make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Psalm 57, a paraphrase. Encompass me with your love and mercy, gracious Lord. I have no security except in you. I am always exposed to the destructive forces of this existence. I am in constant danger of losing the battle to the very passions and desires of my own nature. I can only sub my, submit myself to you and believe that you will fulfill your purposes in me. Your love, O oh God, is steadfast. Your grace is everlasting. Encompass me with your love and mercy, gracious Lord. I have no security except in you. The Old Testament lesson is from Numbers chapter 21, beginning at the fourth verse. They traveled from Mount Hor along the route from to the Red Sea to go around Edom, but the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There is no bread, there is no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people, and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, they lived. So ends the reading from Numbers 21. The epistle lesson is from Ephesians chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So ends the epistle lesson. The Holy Gospel is from John chapter 3, beginning at the 14th verse. 
Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. So ends the reading of the Holy Gospel. Having heard God's word, we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today we're thinking about God's love. And there are three things that kind of jump out at a person as you read through this whole section. The first is the object of God's love. The second is the nature of God's love. And the third is the effect of God's love. So first of all, the object of of God's love. This is a little bit of a surprise because we would think that it would be for his people kind of exclusively, but the text, John 3.16, says God so loved the world. Okay? And earlier in the chapter, in verse 10, it says, He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. And so this world of people who kind of ignored him or were ignorant of him were objects of his love. Romans 5.12 says, Sin came into the world through one man and death through sin. And earlier in that chapter it says, At the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Wow, what a surprise. It isn't primarily, originally, for people who are already in contact with God that this love comes. It comes to whoever, or in the King James Version of the translation, whosoever. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. There was a young man at a youth gathering. He had a t-shirt and he had one word inscribed uh, inscribed on the front of it and said, whosoever. So this was his way of starting the conversation about the love of God. He said, whosoever, what do you mean? He says, well, I'm nobody really special, but I'm one of the whosoevers. I'm just one of those people that happen to be around and I get that gift of God's love. The object of God's love, then, is all people in all the world. That's the intent 
that all should receive this love which leads to life, not just life, eternal life. That leads us to the Old Testament lesson. We think of the nature of God's love. And here the word total comes to mind. There is a total focus on another in God's love. And then there is total giving. First total focus. I think of a little kid out in the street. I've probably told you this before. Here comes a truck at him and you run out and grab that kid and get him out of the way. Your total focus is on saving that child and nothing else. So that's part of the nature of God's love. His total focus is on you and me. And it's just because of his grace, as we heard in the epistle. The big lie, as one of Dave Horn's songs says, is that God hates you when you're bad and loves you when you're good. Well, that's a lie. That's a big lie. He loves you. It's just a matter of our discovering that truth. Also, we have unconditional love when we talk about this nature of God being a, a total focus on another. You may have heard the phrase, he has a face only a mother could love. Well, that may be true, but the fact is that the mother does love that face in spite of what other people might think or how other people might react. There is a love which is total and unconditional. That's the nature of God's love for people as well. In the Old Testament, we have <clears throat> a picture which points forward to Christ with the bronze snake on the pole. The snake is lifted up and people look at the snake if they're bitten by a regular snake so that they can live. And so Jesus is lifted up and this time he's lifted up and gives himself totally so that people can be totally forgiven and people can have a total new relationship with God. And this time, it's not just physical life that people are given, but eternal life. The Old Testament prepares people for this picture of Christ. It points forward to this one great act of history. When people fail, but God gives a way to have life. In the Old Testament, physical life. In Jesus, eternal life. And that leads us to the effect. When people realize this, what happens to them? They get a new attitude. There's a lady <clears throat> by the name of Shatera Sims. In 2012, her daughter was murdered. And during this past year or so, she also lost her job and uh, was just trying to get by on whatever she could get from the government or whatever source. And she was in the parking lot of a grocery store with her younger daughter, and they found a dollar bill in the parking lot. And so they said, you know, this must be our lucky day. And they went and bought a lottery ticket and they won a hundred dollars. And they were ready to go to the grocery store, but then the mother remembered the kindness of the officers when her daughter was murdered. And she had just heard about a police officer who was shot in the head in the line of duty and was in critical condi critical condition. So she said, we're going down to the police station and give this money to help his family. Well, of course, 
when the people at the police station heard about her own situation, they tried to give the money back to her, but she wouldn't hear of it. She gave this money to help the family. The love of those officers was reflected in the love that the lady wanted to then give to this officer. That's what happens to people when they understand or get a glimpse of the love of God. It makes people want to be kind and loving toward other people as well. But what happened then was that they received the $200 and put it in the fund, but then they started a GoFundMe page for the lady. <laughs> and she received thousands of dollars from that GoFundMe page and her problems, at least temporarily, were solved. And so we have that effect on us when we get in touch with the love of God through Jesus Christ. In John chapter 5, verse 20, it says, The Father loves the Son. As the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life. In a certain sense, we share that life as well. We have an opportunity of showing that love as we interact with people and maybe also have a chance to speak about these stories and John 3.16 and those characteristics of God's love. The object is you and me and any person we talk to. The nature is a total focus on that other person, total giving in Christ. And the effect is that when we receive that love and understand that love more, we also reflect that love to others. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Father, we come before you with deep gratitude. You brought us into this world, not so much as isolated individuals, but as people in families, growing from sons and daughters into fathers and mothers, and as people surrounded by the love of your son and your family, which we know as the church. Help us now to be instruments for bringing your kind of love to the world to those who have not yet heard of your love for all people. Let them be drawn into that expanding circle of love which expresses kindness and helpfulness and self-giving. Let the nations of the earth discover and grow a deeper understanding of your love so that they may live together in peace. In the lives of those close to us, let us see healing, progress, and prosperity as expressions of your love to us and those around us and make us eager to share. We pray in the name of Jesus who expressed your love through his total self-giving on the cross and who has taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.